And the main causes of diabetes is how to induce autophagy is probably what you're asking right now. If you are on insulin or sulfonylurea drugs such as glipizide, glyburide, glimabride, listen up. What is really happening in your body when you fast or exercise or even better if you do both? Short answer is autophagy. It sounds like a big word and yes, it is something big and it's important to understand. Let's get right into it. For those who have not seen me before, I am Dr. Ergen, also known as Sugar MD, trying to help everyone in the universe with weight issues, diabetes, pre-diabetes, or insulin resistance. You may have heard about autophagy. It means that body eating itself. That sounds gross. But if you heard about intermittent fasting in my previous videos or blogs, you may have heard me mentioning autophagy as an important function of the body to rejuvenate. Today, we are diving deeper into this because it's important to know, especially for people with diabetes, my people with insulin resistance, or even patients with overweight problems. Today, we will talk about what autophagy is, why it is so freaking important, and how can we induce that thing the autophagy to make it work to our advantage so we can beat the shit out of diabetes, obesity, and insulin resistance together. Diabetes, as you know, is a disease of many hormones. Oh wow, yeah, it is not just insulin problem like some of the YouTube videos you have been watching and they've been claiming it's just all insulin. Well, I'll tell you that it's not. In the coming decades though, diabetes will be the top cause of death after cancer around the world if the trajectory does not change. And the main causes of diabetes is cell damage and problems with energy metabolism, which can lead to horrible, horrible diabetic complications. Recent studies have shown that autophagy is a big part of diabetes and its complications. So it has been found that autophagy helps pancreatic cells and insulin's target tissues like skeletal muscle or liver or the fat cells to work better in harmony. So, what is autophagy? Well, your body eats itself every day. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird, but it is a process that starts the moment we are born. It's not as painful or weird as you might think, but when your body does it, you don't even know about it. Autophagy is a bodily process that removes old or damaged cells from your body and encourages the growth of the new healthy cells. Well, autophagy is also an important process for diabetics and non-diabetics because it helps your body stay healthy and live longer. To find out how to boost the autophagy and how intermittent fasting and autophagy work together, stay with me. Autophagy is a process in which body breaks down and removes the waste from itself. It's like taking your trash out, okay? You're gonna be doing that, right? You have to. The word autophagy comes from the Greek words auto, which means self, and phagi, which means to eat. Together, the name means eat yourself. <laughs> well, lucky for you, you don't have to worry about eating your skin or anything like that. It's all done in microscopic cells. There are around 30 to 40 trillion different cells in your body that do many different things, my friends. They can be damaged by things like general wear and tear, infections, inflammation, especially inflammatory foods like your lovely french fries or your baked goods sold at Publix or chips that are crunchy and tasty. These are your beta cells enemies. The beta cells are insulin producing cells which are very susceptible to inflammation in the body that explains why processed meats and processed foods dramatically increases the risk of diabetes. So, they told you it's all about carbs, right? So, not so much. They need to go to their medical school again. Anyhow, the parts that make up these beta cells can also be damaged. When this happens, the organelles called lysosomes look for areas that have been damaged. They try to salvage what they can and break down the rest of the cell to reuse it. We call this recycling. If you're not doing it, you better start. Recycled materials can then be used to make the new cells or give energy to cells that are already there. Now, both fasting and exercise can induce autophagy. Which one is better? 
You will find that out in this video, so stay with me. Let's talk about a little history with a little story here. Knowing the story or the history actually helps you understand the context better. Autophagy has been taking place in humans for a long time, but the process has only recently been discovered because we are idiots, right? We take millions of years to discover something. The Belgian biochemist started a study in 1963 that looked into how insulin affects the liver. In the course of his studies, he came across a process that had never been seen before. He found that some cells used organelles called lysosomes to eat parts of their structure. Krista Duve won the Nobel Prize in Physiology for that and in medicine in 1974 which is like just 10 years before I was born. So before that, we didn't know that we were eating ourselves. Isn't that funny? Which made people more interested in autophagy and how it could help the body. Well, then in 1983, one year before I was born, I'm trying to give you my date of birth so you can send me presents, a Japanese biologist named Yoshinori Oshumi found that the genes control that autophagy. He found that these genes are what make cells go through the process of autophagy. Without them, cells would not be able to repair themselves. It led to his own Nobel Prize in 2016, and mine is coming in 2200. A breakthrough prize in life sciences in 2017, both of which he won in 2017. So that's why it's kind of still neat for us. The question is, is it good for you? There are a lot of new things that are not necessarily good for you, right? For example, the internet. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Well, this one is good for you. For one thing, recycling of the old, damaged, or sick cells cuts down on the risk of cancer. Yeah, you heard me right. Because they can be used again. Toxins can build up in a damaged cell, and damaged cells go crazy and become cancer sometimes. So the autophagy process removes that harmful material and stops those infected or inflamed cells from multiplying. So when your cells start the process of autophagy, they go into a safety mode. So instead of taking in energy, they use the damaged or broken cell parts to make the energy. It is during this time of conservation that cells become more resistant to disease and other types of stress in your body. Let's take a pause here, guys. If you're enjoying this video so far, please smash that like and subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any of these videos ever again. Got something to say? Write down in the comment section. The only rule is to be nice and gentle and follow community guidelines. Autophagy also has other benefits. For example, it removes the damaged part of the cell to protect against disease and in theory extends the lifespan of the cells. So for example, neurodegeneration, nicely said, dementia, damage to brain cells is one of the main cause of mental illness as well. Protecting your mental health is important because it helps keep your brain healthy and people around you healthy. It recycles healthy parts of your cells, including your brain cells, and makes new one to make up for the damage caused by neurodegeneration. This helps you avoiding getting psychiatric or neurological diseases. For example, buildup of abnormal proteins is what causes neurodegenerative diseases. Some of them are Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, etc. Well, the autophagy stops these proteins from building up in your brain by breaking them down and getting rid of them. Autophagy is a process that removes foreign and damaged parts from your cells. It could be bacteria, it could be toxins, it could be excessive proteins that causes disease. By getting rid of these toxins, the process can keep the diseases like even tuberculosis, HIV from multiplying and spreading in your body, which can keep you from getting them as well. Well, how to induce autophagy is probably what you're asking right now. And I know you're impatient, but I'll give you the answer right now. Well, autophagy happens all the time. <laughs> there are ways to start or enhance the process though. You can boost the autophagy through exercise and fasting. As a general rule, you need to starve your cells of energy. How do you do that? So how you wanna happen depends on you. If you exercise and eat right after, you will not be able to get the autophagy benefit from what you're looking for from the exercise. Let's talk a little deeper into this, right? So for example, alternating fasts and autophagy help your body, right, to grow new cells and stuff like that by making a protein called mTOR. This protein works with insulin to make new cells. Insulin is released when your body gets enough food, which makes your cells grow. 
That's why you get this polyp sometimes you talked about, right? The, and the skin tags and stuff like that. In a time when you don't eat or don't eat very much, your body runs out of carbohydrates and your insulin levels go down. AMP kinase is a protein that your body makes as well. And it's that protein that after you work out, a protein like AMP kinase is released to get rid of the cells that have been damaged by the micro tears in your muscles. So lifting, for example, or taking a long walk or running, etc., will damage your muscle cells. This protein tells your body that it doesn't have enough energy sources. There is damage in there, which means that it needs to get rid of the old ones, right? So to make the new ones, your body then will start to repair the damaged cells or totally destroy them or break down the old ones. And that process is exactly called autophagy. You will not get autophagy if you are in a fat state because then your body won't have to break down the old cells for energy. To induce the autophagy, you have to stay in fasting state even after exercise, at least for a few hours. People who eat irregularly, I didn't say regularly, irregularly achieve autophagy better. Besides exercising or cutting back on the food, intermittent fasting is, for example, one of the best ways to make your body start to get rid of things, like the bad cells. However, waiting just a few hours between meals is not gonna do that. So your body needs at least 14 to 16 hour fast to get into that phase. For those who can't fast that long, I think exercise is a good way of needing less of a fasting time. If you exercise, you can induce the autophagy within 12 to 16 hours of fast instead of 16 to 18 hours that, that's required typically for a good autophagy process. A study of autophagy and fasting found that short-term fasting periods of 24 hours, well, that's not that short, right? <laughs> but it is kind of a short compared to a week, right? Uh, but it has caused a big rise in the number of cells going through autophagy. So 24 hours is, is the sweet spot there. For autophagy even, you might benefit from up to two day fast if you have done a lot of long-term fasting before and you're used to it and you can handle longer period of fasting. Well, following a two day fast can help your body quite a bit to fight the disease and slow the aging. That increases the body's rate of autophagy, which helps remove the waste, etc. A more realistic 16 to 8 fast may be the best place to start because autophagy starts much earlier than that. So, for example, last meal is at 6 p.m. and then you eat the next meal at 10 a.m. next day or 12 a.m., 12 p.m. That can give you the 16 hour of fasting. So, the key is skipping meals and prolonging that fasting period, and you can determine when you're gonna do that 16 hour of fasting. So it's totally up to your schedule. You don't have to do it every day. You can do it twice a week, three times a week. Some people do it every day. But if you don't wanna do that much of a fasting, you can still induce autophagy with 12 hours of fasting if you are really exercising intensely for half an hour to an hour every day. You can hydrate yourself, but you should not be eating something right after the exercise if you want to induce the autophagy. On the other hand, if you are on insulin or sulfonylurea drugs such as glipizide, glyburide, glimabride, listen up. You need to consult with your doctor before starting any fasting regimen. You have to. You cannot just go fasting when you're on insulin. That, that you're gonna crash, okay? Is autophagy is a good idea for weight loss? Yeah, it can be. Well, autophagy does not help with the weight loss directly, right? It doesn't just eat your body entirely. But if you're fasting or exercising or doing both, to make your body break down the old cells and stuff like that, you will naturally lose weight as a result. Even if you did not lose too much weight or you do not need to lose weight necessarily, that process can still remove and repair the cells that no longer do their job well, which can make your metabolic processes run more smoothly. It's like tuning or balancing your body and making you live longer. If you want to lose weight, you'll usually try things like intermittent fasting anyways and cutting back on the carbs, which can put you into autophagy. So it's like a chicken and egg situation. However, healthy carbohydrates such as fruits and vegetables are an important nutrient source. So you should not be cutting those out for a long period of time, even with diabetes. You wanna cut out carbs? Yeah, cut the rice, cut the pasta, cut the potato, cut the bread, my friend. There's a lot of things to cut, but not the healthy ones, okay? So you can have all the rest. How about uh, fasting for a long time? Is that safe? So how long is safe? 
Well, extended fasting and intermittent fasting are both good ways to lose weight, balance your hormones, and make your body break down the old unhealthy food and unnecessary fat. However, it is important to follow the safety rules when you start these protocols. Even if you don't eat or drink for a long time, drink a lot of water to stay hydrated. That's number one. Now, up to 30% of water your body needs come from the food you eat. So it's important to get back the water that you lost while you are fasting. Another important thing is electrolyte levels because if you decide to go on a long-term fast, you have to pay attention how much water and electrolytes you're getting in. There are just a few electrolytes that your body needs to stay healthy and alert. And these are sodium, magnesium, calcium, and potassium, and some others. Because most of these electrolytes come from the food you eat, it is important to take a supplement to make up for them. There may be headaches or dizziness if you don't, and it may be actually even more severe. Now, I would recommend checking out our diet vitamin on our website that has everything you will need with or without fasting, especially if you have diabetes, pre-diabetes, or insulin resistance. Again, its name is diet vitamin. It's available on our website at sugarmds.com. If you haven't fasted before and don't know how to fast or how to start, start small. Consider starting with 12 hours of fast and then maybe a 16 hour fast for autophagy and then you can stick to your 16 to 8 fasting plan. If you are more experienced, you can go for a 40 hour fast, 48 hour fast, whatever, but make sure you stay hydrated during the whole time. For those who are on insulin and sulfonylurea, you have to be super, super careful as fasting can induce significant and severe low blood sugars. Talk to your doctor, make sure you adjust your medications if you are planning on going on intermittent fasting or significant exercise or both. The bottom line, you can make your body feel new with autophagy. Normally, your cells go through the process of autophagy all the time, but it's not very efficient. You can speed it up to get more of the good things that can happen with autophagy. If you follow an intermittent fasting plan or workout, or you can do both, you can get your body back in shape, improve your longevity, and start on the road to wellness, my friends. Well, thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, remember to like, share, and write a comment. Remember to subscribe. Love you all. See y'all later. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.